chances are, at some point in your life, you've had a drink that's had a radioactive element in it. And it's got quite a bit of it in it, too. And it's pink. Pepto-Bismol. What element is it? Surprisingly, bismuth. Timothy Long blacksmithing here with another elemental video. So let's just get into it. Bismuth is element number 83 on the periodic table of elements. It is in group 15, also known as the nictogens, right below antimony. It has a melting point of 520 Fahrenheit, which is also 271 Celsius. But what I was referencing in the beginning that's also pretty interesting about bismuth is that it won't last forever. It's actually technically an unstable element. Every single one of its isotopes is unstable. Even though its most stable isotope has a half-life that's likely to outlive the Earth, it's still technically unstable. For all practical purposes though, you don't need to worry. Even scientists in large part consider it to be functionally stable. So you're safe drinking Pepto-Bismol from a radiological perspective. And actually, the safety of bismuth is what makes it really unique. In the periodic table, it actually kind of stands out in its place for being... safe to consume. It is still a heavy metal and it still can bioaccumulate, but comparing it with what's around it, for instance lead on one side, polonium on the other, and then you have antimony above it, much safer than any of those, really. But again, this is by comparison. It is possible to overdose on Pepto-Bismol, also known as bismuth subsalicylate. More on that later, though. For now, let's get into the uses for bismuth. Bismuth is actually a really important element in the medical industry because it has so many really cool uses within the human body, most of which have to do with the gastrointestinal system. It displays a pretty famous use in Pepto-Bismol, a rather common household product, but also it has a really cool use that I just found out about. Apparently, bismuth is used in the treatment of cadmium poisoning, which I think is really cool. I really don't like metal poisoning. I've had metal poisoning before, not cadmium, zinc, same group, vastly different kind of poisoning. But still, it's really cool when you think about it that you use this heavy metal to get rid of this other heavy metal, or at least get rid of the effects that it produces. Now there are other medical uses for bismuth, and going into all of them would be a little bit much, but uh, among them is also to treat eye infections, which is pretty cool. It doesn't have much to do with the gastrointestinal system, I just figured it was worth mentioning. Now a use for bismuth that hits a little bit closer to home, for me anyway, is its use in alloys and as a lead replacement. Bismuth is seen as a much more ecologically friendly substitute to lead, and rightfully so, I mean it's much less dangerous than lead. There are properties that make it markedly different than lead though. Lead is very malleable, very stretchy, very bendy, it's almost like putty, but metallic. Bismuth on the other hand is very brittle, so there is there are few practical differences, but other than that they are actually pretty similar. And as much as I'd love to go into all of the other metallic uses for bismuth, because there are a lot and they're weird and they're really cool, I'll just cover one more. Bismuth bronze. And of course, it wouldn't be a Timothy Long blacksmithing video if I didn't go over bronze at some point in the course of my speech. Bismuth bronze is essentially any bronze alloy that contains about 1-3% to by weight bismuth. Now, in my opinion, and for the purposes I generally use bronze, it seems to be the absolute superior bronze. And here's why. It tends to polish better, which, I mean, for decorative applications like this, amazing, right? But it also boasts a higher malleability than your regular bronze. So, I might be able to hammer work a ring without it absolutely busting. We'll see. Although, what's interesting, just on a personal note, is that bismuth is less malleable, and adding it to something that isn't particularly malleable makes it more malleable? 
Metallurgy is weird, what can I say? Now, before I become too much of a fan of bismuth, we do have to get into the dark side of bismuth. It's toxicity. Now, bismuth can be toxic, so just want to get that out of the way. But it's much less toxic than everything around it. This is probably because bismuth salts are less soluble than all of the other heavy metal salts in that general area of the periodic table, which is a little bit fascinating, I must admit. And bismuth's half-life in the body is generally about five days, although that can be longer depending on uh, what form of bismuth or how the bismuth was introduced to the body or something like that. I mean, don't take any of this as medical advice, I'm not a doctor. In very rare cases, though, bismuth can actually cause discoloration of the skin, a little bit like the more famous instances of silver doing this, bismuth can actually cause the skin to change color, usually get kind of a darker metallic look to it. Kind of an interesting look, but not something that I would go for necessarily. After all, people might wish to call me the Tin Man and I'd have to correct them and say, no, I'm a bismuth man. These jokes are just getting horrible, aren't they? Do keep in mind, though, that this is a very, very rare occurrence, so not much is really actually known as to why or how it happens, just that it's associated with bismuth. But as always, as far as the toxicity of bismuth is concerned, I do advocate for caution and safety. After all, you don't want to get a surprise of metal poisoning. That'd be rather rough. Now, what do I intend to use bismuth for? Well, I'm a little bit partial to bismuth myself. I actually do kind of like bismuth quite a bit. So I'm planning on probably getting some pure bismuth and at some point casting some. I don't know when I'm going to do that. It's probably going to be in the far future though. Um, some stuff is going on. I figure I should probably address that first. So just going to be putting the bismuth project off for a little bit. But alongside that, I do plan on making some bismuth bronze and hopefully making a ring out of bismuth bronze and testing to see if that thing puts a green ring on my finger or not. If it doesn't, success. But if it does, oh well, I've got a bismuth bronze ring. Pretty cool still. Anyway, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please do leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Keep the channel going, you know, help out the algorithm, all that good stuff. So, with that, thank you guys for joining me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you all have a wonderful day.